has you know some shots, some tough shots. You got to give Gold State credit; they played some good defense in that second half. But uh, free throws hurt the Jazz yes. down the stretch yeah. as well. But. Jazz drop one that they should have had. They led the entire game and uh, went four for like 25 in the fourth quarter. Lowry Markinen, Markinen, I'm getting that sweet or that Finland accent, uh, just comes out on fire. I believe he had five three pointers to start the half and then. Came out, shot another one, made it, um, and really didn't see the ball after that. We only we only made four field goals in the fourth quarter. Four field goals, crazy. Uh, didn't feel like we played bad. JC, I felt like played actually a pretty good game for what I've been wanting him to do. Third quarter, it seemed like he started to turn it on. Just had some some boneheaded mistakes. Um, there was one play with like six minutes, eight minutes left in the third quarter where they got five different attempts. Uh, just a <laughs> this one stings, man. I don't know if this one stings worse than the last one. It, you know, we were winning the whole game. Just felt like we were in control the entire game, and then drop it. Um, and we've got some special guests coming on to explain Top Shot, which is something that I heard about for the first time tonight. And I've got my first Kelly Olenek Top Shot officially. I guess they're NFTs. Um, the NBA, NBA owns them. This is the first time I've heard about them. We've got a guy that is supposed to come on and explain that in a little bit. Um, Looks like we've got some frustrated Jazz fans in here. Um, Kevin, I'm going to go over to you since you've been accepted first, and then I'll accept the other guy. So go ahead. Let it out. You know, what I think is interesting, we were talking in the pregame, and we're like, you know, in order for us to win games, we need Markkinen to take 20 shots, we need Beasley to take 12 shots, and we need... Clarkson to take no more than 14 shots. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> so tonight, Markkinen took 22, Clarkson took 14, and Beasley took 12, and we lost. So I guess I don't know basketball because mm. I thought that that was a winning recipe. I figured if that happened, there's no way we could lose. Like, that was what we needed to happen to win. I mean, I don't know what happened – yeah, we've been asking for it. We've been asking for Markkinen to get 20-plus, Jordan to get less, and that is what happened. Uh, my question, I guess, is like, wh- why did Markkinen not get the ball down the stretch when we're in this drought? He was the one guy that was on fire, shot 45% from the field, 53% from the three-point line. Why, why do we not have plays to run to Lowry? I, you know, I thought what was weird is he took two shots in the third quarter, and I think because – and though both those shots came early in the third quarter. He didn't take any shots like the last seven minutes of the third quarter, and I think he got cold. He came out um, on the bench in the fourth quarter, and when he came off, he just couldn't hit, and he just couldn't get back in that rhythm. And, I mean, we've seen this a couple times now where he goes into halftime like the freaking MVP – of the league yeah and comes out of the locker room like the most unimproved player of the league (laughs) well it looked like he was going to have a career night i think he had 26 um at halftime or maybe it was in third quarter he finishes with 16 rebounds uh i mean yeah we've seen it before where he disappears in the fourth quarter and uh you've got us you've got to wonder is he getting tired? Is he getting tired or we just don't have plays 
that are ran through him. I mean, that last shot to me um, was about three feet behind the three point line. Told me that he was tired. He just he just didn't have it. We were only we really didn't need a three, but he jacks a three up, and then the game just immediately over. You know, we still have one timeout, so maybe a quick two, uh, play that the foul look, game again. That didn't look so tired to me as it did a broken play. He looked like he was looking for someone to do something, and everyone was just kind of standing around. Like it looked like a broken play. Um, I don't know if he was waiting for Linux to come screen or for someone to come get the ball. Kind of reminded me. Remember, I don't know, a couple weeks back when he brought the ball up the court and he was looking for someone to come get it, and no one came, got it, and he got yeah. the ball stolen. Yeah, it, it kind of felt like the same thing. He was like, he was looking for someone to do something. Nobody did anything, so he just jacked the shot up. I don't know. That's what it kind of looked like to me. More than he was tired, he just he just put the shot up because no one looked like they wanted to do anything. Yeah. Either way, he's, if he was tired or it was a broken play, like he, you call the timeout to score, and how ha- I just don't get how we that's that's the last shot that we get. Um, I'm gonna go over to JC's drip. Go ahead, man. You're on. Is he connecting? I'm on. You're on JC's drip. Um, yeah. What everyone else is saying, marketing needs to get going uh, in the fourth quarter. But at the same time, I think he had some opportunities in the fourth. He just couldn't hit him. I think he had two layups. Uh, yeah, yeah. He did have that right. one. He missed those. Mm-hmm. Um. I saw a mismatch. I think Ty Jerome's on him, uh, a player too. And I think, you know, if you have a, a big on Ty Jerome every time, just attack that mismatch. And uh, that's something that we failed to do tonight. Um, another gripe of mine, I think Colin Sexton needed to have a role in the fourth quarter because, sure, Mike was facilitating, but when we're in a drought, um, we either need buckets, and if not buckets, we need energy. And that's what Sexton would provide for us. So, um I think, honestly, if Sexton played that fourth quarter, I think we would have pulled it off. I think we would have gotten some, some momentum back. And as much as I love JC, he made some real boneheaded mistakes. Yeah. And I think that's what lost us the game tonight. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as much as I love him, uh, he is who he is. He's going to make mistakes and really bad mistakes at that. So, you know, you take the highs and you take the lows with him too. But honestly, I'm not even that mad. I tweeted this like... Um, the Jazz lost this game. It's not that the Warriors won this game. The Jazz yeah, lost we it. for sure lost so, it. It is what it is. Yeah, I, I agree with the the boneheaded plays. Like there was just some that were very uncharacteristic of Jordan, and <laughs> the thought crossed my mind: like, man, is he having girl problems? Like, what is you know what's going on? He's been in a drought, <laughs> struggling for a little while, and uh, not to knock too hard on Lowry. I mean, Kelly Olynyk misses two free throws and Clarkson missed one and uh in crunch time and he missed one earlier. So it's like oh, you don't expect Olynyk and Clarkson to miss three free throws in in crunch time. I mean, that that ties the game and totally changes the game as well. So, um yeah, we we definitely definitely lost this game. I'm going to go over you know- to go ahead I wonder, so we saw, what, three, four days ago, we saw on the news that um, the Jazz and JC's guys are talking contracts, and I, I really wondered if that was a leak from JC's side, because talks aren't going well, and they leaked it to get talks going. I wonder if JC is upset on how talks are going, because I know he wants to stay in Utah, and I wonder yeah. if he's frustrated. Like, cause it feels like the last week, week and a half, like he's really just not been himself. He's not, his head's just not in the game. Like he's just, he's just not the JC, like he's playing hero ball. He's just going through the motions. Like he's not making star smart decisions. Um, I don't know. Just, just a thought. Maybe, I don't know. We've seen that stuff affect other players around the league throughout the years. So just a Definitely thought. could be coaches on, so I'm going to pass the mic to him. There's nights that you can 
play poorly and win and there's nights that you can execute what you want to play the way you want to play and things just don't go your way and I felt after our game in San Antonio I thought our team had a really good practice yesterday really refocused themselves on the defensive end and defending as a group we gave up 34 points in the paint tonight coming off a game where we gave up over 70 and we go into the fourth quarter with a lead. We give up 24 points in that fourth quarter, but we also went one for 11 from three and missed some free throws late. I thought the three balls that we got for the most part, uh, the only one we made was probably the hardest one we took, and that was the Jordan one uh, late. So I think it's really important for, for our guys to understand that the result tonight does not necessarily reflect how they approach the game as a team. I thought they dug in, um, really, really competed against a, a good team, you know, in a hard environment to play in. <clears throat> we moved the ball. We got good shots. Um, you know, their physicality has bothered us in the past, and I thought tonight we rose to the occasion and, and really played a good game with the exception of not making any shots in the fourth quarter. Um, I think if we had said going into the fourth quarter we would have a six-point lead and only give up 24 points in that fourth quarter, we would feel very good about that. But um, there's some nights that the ball just doesn't seem to go in. <laughs> and I thought that tonight was one of those nights. So we have a, a big game at Sacramento to close out this road trip. And, um, you know, it's on us as a staff and a team to, to maintain some perspective and, and try to approach this next game the right way. Well, it seemed like for a pretty long stretch of the fourth quarter, um, Bowery wasn't getting touches. Is this, even though you liked most of your looks, you said, does the team sometimes need to kind of recognize that they need to force feed the guy who's been hot up to that point? Yeah, I'm not sure that I totally agree with you, to be honest. I think he took three threes early in the fourth quarter. I think he shot a turnaround jump hook in the middle of the lane that he missed. Um, you know, he had the most shots on our team by eight. And, you know, we, we play a team style of basketball, and we're not going to ever make the game about one player. I thought we put Lowry in a lot of actions. That doesn't always necessarily mean you get the ball. Um, Lowry is not an off-the-dribble isolation player, and so sometimes we use him to create an advantage for his teammates, and I thought he did that tonight. Um, of course, you would like for the ball to always find a guy in a great spot so that he can get a shot, but that's a very good defensive team we just played, and um, they're very experienced and smart, and they're not going to just let Lowry tee off in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, he was involved in a lot of the stuff we were doing, and um, I don't have the end of the third quarter box score to know how many field goal attempts he had in the fourth. Um, but, you know, in the rhythm of the game, yeah, you want guys to recognize who's hot, and... I think for the majority of the game, the guys did that. Lowry got 13 threes off, um, not really shooting many of them off the dribble. So I think his teammates do a great job of looking for him and finding him. Um, you know, that fourth quarter, we couldn't seem to, to find a very good rhythm um, of making shots. And, you know, I'll go back and look at it and see if there's opportunities where, where I can help them get Lowry a touch. But, you know, I thought that, Golden State did a very good job defensively of, of trying to not just let him be the focal point of the game. And so, um, you know, we involved a lot of other players, and I, I do think that we generated some good shots in that fourth quarter. I was... So he took... He had, he had 16 shots in the first three quarters and six in the fourth quarter. So I don't know. I wasn't a math major. I was just about he that. He had 5.33 shots per quarter in the first three quarters, and then he had six in the fourth, so it feels okay to me. But I'll have to watch it. I mean, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just think sometimes we all get a little bit, um, we can get a little bit over-focused on one guy when he is the only person that's making shots. But in the NBA, when you're not an off-the-dribble, step-back player, 
it's easier said than done sometimes to just manufacture 10 shots for a guy in a quarter. You know, Mike, you hear Coach and, and he's talking about certainly the defensive effort. So I usually don't disagree with Coach, but I think, I, I, I think I'm going to disagree with him right there. Um, he's not an off-the-ball dribble or create-your-own-shot type of guy. I think he is if you have the correct play. Like if you put him on the post, he's a seven-footer that can do so many different things. Uh, and I think that's a, a little bit that of that should fall on Coach. Um, he has six shots. I'm okay with that. What? what? You got an all-star. Like you, that's the guy that needs the ball in the fourth quarter. This is my opinion. I don't know about you guys. Um, we had a, a few trolls in here, so I made my co-host. Um, if we have any inappropriate um, talk going on, I'm just going to mute everybody and you'll ruin the space or we'll just kick you. So um, we're going to pass the mic over. I believe it was uh, actually we had a new uh, Andrea or Andrew. Sorry, um, you're raising your hand. Let me see if you can speak here. Yeah, Andrew, let's pass the mic to you since you're raising your hand. Yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah, man. So, what did y'all think about Laurie Markkinen tonight? We've already discussed that. <laughs> what about uh, Jared Vanderbilt? All right, we're going to go to Armani. Thanks, Andrew. All right, Armani, uh, can one of you guys kick Andrew? <laughs> um, oh, wait, we're going to let's go to uh, the Jazz Lounge because he wants to explain what these top shots are real quick. Uh, and then we'll get dive back into the game. But um, I know that a lot of people are probably listening right now since we are not very far into the stream so let's go over to the jazz lounge i think you have to request to speak though yep okay go ahead man good evening good evening I'm coming off of a cold so i don't sound right but uh <clears throat> yeah I was, I was spamming the the chat earlier about top shot um and i was surprised a few people in the chat hadn't even heard of top shot um definitely want to do my best to explain it in just a minute or two um so nba top shot is a uh, obviously it's a website uh nbatopshot.com it's and it's officially licensed nfts by the nba and uh this is their fourth season uh doing the nfts with the nba right and it's it's getting more fun it's getting better it's getting more exciting with each season um they do so what they do is they do limited pack drops, right? So it's just like you're buying basketball cards, except for they are digital and they are stored on a blockchain, which is confusing if you're not into the NFT stuff. But yeah, um, and I, I'm on YouTube right now on Top Shot, uh, kind of scrolling through as you talk about this so people can get an idea if, if people want to head over to YouTube and, and see what, what we're talking about. Yeah, there's a good like crash course video on YouTube that explains it. But basically, you can get a moment that's limited to, let's say, okay, so Walker Kessler's rookie, you know, when, when a new player comes out, we get their rookie cards. Well, with Top Shot, they have rookie moments. So all rookie debuts are limited to 4,000. So Yeah, I see one of moments. Paulo Banchero from Orlando. It's going yeah. for... $67 right now average sell yeah. $62 and I bought one of those at 50 bucks a couple weeks ago because I knew cool. it would climb um, 
right now Walker Kessler's at ten bucks. Um, so I'm trying to stack up on his because I think he's gonna have an awesome season and so you know an awesome career honestly so so it's kind of you know it's collecting but it's it's well there's one on here clay thompson block december 25th 2013 is going for six thousand five hundred dollars yeah that's that's part of the deck the hoops um christmas day set that came out a few years ago i'm in trouble because this might be a new addiction and i'm i don't I'm glad you're explaining it because I don't know how I'm going to explain it to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and that's, this is what's so cool about it. And, and so bear with me for a minute. So Top Shot has a, disc, a Discord server, right? That's, that's linked directly from their website. And each team has its own channel. So are you running the Jazz's channel or... Yes, I'm one of two. So we have two captains. Okay. So each team has two captains that that moderate the channel, but also Top Shot gives each team or the team captains X amount of money each month to put back into the community. Wow. And so I'm in the same boat. Like my wife doesn't care about collecting she's like you're buying what a digital video for how much (laughs) but um you know like i i I shared that we were at the the denver home opener in a suite um top shop paid seventy five hundred dollars for that experience whoa uh it was catered i didn't pay a dime we had packs provided to us by top shot um so and are so, you saying that that you're giving those experiences away to jazz fans or or yes. okay. So each team has their own their own budget, their own group, their own um channel and they do whatever they want. The cool thing about being in the jazz community is we get the same amount of money as the Lakers community. But sweet. It's a lot easier for us right. to spread a couple. There's not as many people. It is for, right, and tickets aren't nearly as much, and so you know, different teams use their funds differently. Like the the Memphis Grizzlies um, bought courtside season tickets, and I mean they pretty much blew their entire year's worth of, of funds. <laughs> but they send they send Top Shot collectors to every Grizzlies game courtside. Um, wow that's awesome and and so you know i went to the clippers game with my son a few weeks ago like 14th row um because i won tickets in our in our channel um uh and i was telling you friday night we're getting together at legends in salt lake and i've got a thousand dollars worth of prizes to give out um so do people have to sign up for this or they just they just show up what like what so the 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 irl which means in real life those events um we want as many people to come as as possible to to kind of expose them show them what it's about but we reserve the prizes for the people that have team sets so uh, a team set is the equivalent of a, of a season. So you can hold a Series 1 Jazz Team set, a Series 2, or a Series 3 Jazz Team set. And holding one of those team sets will get you into the Discord, which then unlocks all of the um, contests. You know, we do daily contests. Before every game, we do pick where... You try to predict plus minuses, um, over unders. Yeah, I did the one today on Jared Vanderbilt. How many uh, <laughs> that was points? Just a Twitter. That was just a Twitter. So in our Discord, okay. um, there's a better one where uh, the prizes are usually like twenty to thirty dollar moments that um, we give for every single game, just for picking the right one. And then you know you're in the Discord, so you're chatting with fellow Jazz fans. Yeah. Um, but it's such a fun, like, super positive community. Um, it's it's way less toxic than the Twitterverse. Like, 
Yeah, we were just saying how Twitter is is basically still like the Wild West. They're just some yeah, crazy it's people. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the bathroom stall of, of the internet. <laughs> right. So, so can you send me the link to your Discord or like the links t- for people to get in touch with all this stuff? Because it sounds like it's um, pretty in depth. Yeah, I will send you over a couple of links, um, and then. You know, I DM'd you uh, that kind of shortcut to set you up and, and have a Kelly moment. And then I have a fair amount of extra moments that I would love to send your way to help you complete a jazz set so that you can get Dude. into the Discord and see so what it's all about. Is the moment is the moment the NFT, because the moment that I got was Kelly Olenek. Uh, it was that finger roll shot that he had, the game, the game winner. winner. In yeah. the those yellow jerseys, so I was like, "That's a that's a cool one to have." So, yeah. is a moment totally. like a a trading card? Is that what you call yes. them? Okay, yes. okay. So the moment, so you'll you'll see on yours that it has a specific serial number attached to it. So, yeah. So, um, I have seven or eight of that Kelly moment. I can't remember how many, just because I love it. Um, because I love Kelly. Yeah, like the, I mean, the one with uh, the the moments that are coming to mind this season, right? You've got Larry Markinen that hits that shot over Devin Booker against the Suns. You got Simone Fontecchio with the game winning dunk against the Golden State uh, yeah. Warriors last that game. One hasn't been minted yet. Um, let's see. Uh, so how long do they usually take to like? Let's just say someone hits a game winning shot. How long until a moment comes out? Well, and that's the other awesome part about Top Shot is they do ch- flash challenges. Okay, now I'm going to blow your mind even more. So this is where, like, the fantasy aspect comes into play. So on Christmas Day, they did a huge flash challenge. So this is just an example. They do this three times a week. But um, Jordan Clarkson had a flash challenge a couple weeks ago that was super difficult to complete, and so only... Like, I think 174 people completed it. So you can see that moment on the marketplace goes for around 75 bucks because it's pretty limited. Um, But what they'll do is they'll say, it's totally random. So tomorrow they might come out with a challenge that says, okay, collect the top three players in assists, the top three players in scoring, and the top three players in steals in tonight's game. And we will award you with a moment from this game that's tonight. And so um, having this big collection, you know, benefits you because you have these moments already required. Um, I think I'm going to have to go to Legends Friday night because this sounds way way fun. (laughs) what, What we're trying to do at Legends is everybody that comes that's like somebody like yourself we're trying to give i want to say the first 20 people an entire series two set so what's this can you explain what a series is is that like everyone on the roster or how does that that, work yes during that season so series so series one was a total pain in the ass to complete because jerrell jerrell brantley had a moment (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it was limited to I want to say fifteen hundred. Wow! And so, wow. if you wanted to complete the series one set, you had to buy a Brantley, which I paid like, I mean, I got to talk quiet. I think I paid like a hundred and fifty bucks for it. Oh my gosh! For, um, for yeah, a player that it's never not played even on the team, yeah, crazy. Um, but now he's dead. Now that moment's down to eighty. We're giving one of them away, actually, at Legends. But um, so what do you more, mean? So what do you mean? It, 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 you say the Brantley one goes from fifteen hundred to eighty. What, like no, no. There was. I'm sorry. The the mint count is only fifteen hundred. So only fifteen hundred of that Brantley moment exist. Okay. And so. The more people that want to hold a jazz set, oh, the gotcha. more competitive. So Top Shot totally pissed off jazz collectors last year because they broke our team sets because they released a Jeff Hornacek let. It's called a legendary moment. Yeah, and there's only fifty of them, 
And oh so the cheapest gosh. Hornacek moment is 2500 bucks. Yeah, I'm looking so, at a Steve Nash one right now. Uh, he's in a Laker jersey going for 35000 uh-huh. It was a cyst, some... April 8, 2014. So, so do does the NBA release, like, let's just say the John Stockton shot over Charles Barkley, right? Yeah. Like, is yep. that a moment already? Not yet, but I promise you it will be. They just released uh, their first Carl Malone moment over the summer um, from the 86-87 season. They did, like, a spotlight of that season. This is so cool because, like, if there's there's – playing cards right and like my kids are little so but when when you say oh yeah you know i was at this game and john stockton hit this shot and then you got to go try and find out on youtube youtube but if you just own it like i own this and there's only i don't know 50 of these like the john stockton shot like (laughs) or the the pass from john stockton to carl malone like yeah i own one of those yeah. Um, and s- I've been wanting to get into NFTs and just not really knowing, you know, what, what they are or, or how they're going to develop. And honestly, I still think they haven't even hit, uh, mainstream at all. No. And, and so I mean, when you, yeah, yeah. yeah, when you mentioned it linked with the jazz, I was like, oh man, I, I could definitely see myself getting into this. Yeah. Cause I'm a collector. I love collecting, but yeah, that's that's been kind of pushed aside because the people that I've met, you know, the contacts that I've established, the experiences that I've had, you know, I got to take my wife with me to that Nuggets game in the suite, and she's like, okay, like, yeah, this, this is pretty is worth dope. It. <laughs> yeah. We went, we we rented Top Golf uh, over the summer and and did a Top Golf event where, you know, hung out, golfed, catered, did prizes. So the, um, it seems I know we're pr- getting totally off topic of this Utah Jazz Golden State Warriors, but uh, <laughs> uh, after that loss, I kind of want to talk about this. Um, totally. So how long how long has Top Shot been a thing, and how many people are in the Jazz community so, so far? We're in Top Shot's in its fourth season, so I guess you would say four years. Wow, um, and I. I have access to the numbers, um, but the Discord group itself, like the regulars on there, it's it's not it's not too big. Um, under thirty people that are like regulars, um, but like they do leaderboards. So uh, the more you coll- like, so they did a Top Shot did a snapshot in october i want to say and the top 750 jazz collectors were all given a what's called a jazz duo moment Uh and it's just it's this moment that's just darren williams and carlos boozer um going off like it's such a cool moment um so that was like given to everybody so each team has a duo moment and so um that was fairly competitive like during when they announced that that snapshot would be taken like like that Brantley moment that I talked about a minute ago was back up around 200 bucks yeah um Laker moments were going bananas because there's so many Laker collectors um last last season I got my brother-in-law into Top Shot and he bought a pack and he pulled a, a Cade Cunningham rookie moment, and it was serial number 81, which is obviously really low out of 4,000. And people love the low serial numbers. So he sold it for $800 and just rolled that 800 bucks over into, like, you know, jazz moments, moments that were more relevant to him. Um, huh, so that's there's, cool. There's, like, there's, there's tons of pack luck you can have. I pulled a a super low um uh what's the kid's name for orlando uh bro franz franz wagner yeah last year i sold for like 250 bucks so are the lower numbers more valuable or is that just something that the community makes more valuable the community just value like i don't care about the serial numbers but most people love the lower serial numbers and so it drives the value up 
jersey numbers are super valuable because they have like a little badge next to the number. So like if you pulled a number, you know, 32 Carl Malone, it's it's like highlighted and looks different. Like it's it's clearly like a special thing. That's cool. So it's got WNBA on there as well. It's got these, I'm looking at the main uh, website, starter challenge prize, starter pack, $9. When you buy a starter pack, I mean, how many is coming in one of those packs? I, I think it's three moments. I would probably yeah. say don't buy the pack right now. They just had some pretty good packs for sale, but they're sold out. I would wait for the next wave of good packs. Um, and, yeah, what I would do is change your... It always gives you a stupid name that, you know, gets generated. DM me what you end up with as your name, and I'll, and I'll, I'll send you some moments. I'll get some other people from the Discord group to send you some moments. Okay. And um, get your, your S3 set complete. Because, dude, the S3 Series 3 set only costs, like, I want to say 15 17 bucks to complete. Oh, that's not bad. So, I've yeah. got, I've got Dallin and Kevin on here. They're basically my co-host on the podcast you guys have any questions that you want to ask him yeah uh so you have to get a full lineup before you can get into the discord group yeah as of now and and top shot's been going back and forth with this um it sucks in these moments because i'm trying to explain this to people and if you could see the discord group it would be a lot more like enticing yeah. but at the same time when you do have to have a set it keeps out the random warriors fans that want to talk trash like aren't gonna jump into the jazz chat and just start like being the trolls that jump into our right. spaces yeah exactly. the guy yeah, exactly. that we had so, to kick <laughs> right right so in the like it, I think it keeps the community aspect a little bit tighter with that requirement, but I think it does slow some of the onboarding. Um, so Top Shot's looking at, at alternatives to that, but as of now, yeah, you still need a team set. And the cheapest one to accomplish is the, the S3 or Series 3. A lot of Series 3 moments are down to a dollar right now, which is crazy that's the lowest the floor's ever been for moments so it's a good time to get into it because it kind of bottomed out when everything else did yeah you know with crypto and everything but it's it is climbing back up like, yeah no noticeably. i'm definitely fully enticed uh, i don't know about <laughs> kevin but yeah i think if i lived there i'd definitely it's... be show up at legends so <laughs> well and and where do you live I live in Wyoming, but we're gonna eventually relocate uh, back to to Salt Lake area. We so. do. Uh, yeah. We sent, like I said, we had a jazz fan in Golden State at the game. So, like, we send play collectors to yeah. If, to you, games if you send me to the Nuggets game, I will be the most annoying fan on this. Yeah. Side so. <laughs> so, like, that's totally something we could do. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm so passionate about Top Shot is because they're really investing back into the community and creating a a huge like you know bridge. Well, and see, it intrigued me because that's kind of what we're trying to do with the podcast is like get this really tight knit community that's into the jazz and. Uh, we're, we, we've been discussing, like, should we go a different route than Twitter? But, uh, yeah, just you reaching out to me was like, man, this is really cool. And he, and even just to have it as a hobby on the side. Um, totally. Like, people are picking up trading cards again. My brother actually has a YouTube channel called Pulling Packs where they pull packs and then they give them away to whoever comments on them. And I'm like, man, maybe he could, he could in- integrate this into his YouTube channel. Um and I think there's value in holding a card and it's, you know, yeah. old school. But this is this to me is the new way. And honestly, it's more like an, an investment uh, with totally. NFTs. It's, you know, everything's authenticated. You don't have to worry about it. So this right. is this is it's, it's awesome. You don't have to worry about the condition or the yeah. 
where you're going to store them. Well, me and my brothers, like, like we were even looking for Pokemon cards because, like, if we had our full set, you know, they're worth a yeah, ton of money. But it's like totally. we have we have no clue where we put those Pokemon cards from <laughs> our childhood. Uh, you know? I stole them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are worth uh, some money, dude. They are. They are, it's for sure. And and wait till you see uh there's a product called an infinite object and they they collaborate with Top Shot. So so picture a, a clear picture frame that displays your moment. And, and it just loops your moment. You flip it over, and on the back, it has like, like, like a digital, like a yeah. digital uh, yeah. picture, picture frame. frame. Okay, yeah. but it's but it's your specific moment, like your serial number. So That's I've been dope. meaning to <laughs> send that off. Cool. Uh, I've got a Damian Lillard moment that I want to get because I went to Weaver. Oh, you're gonna I make Jordan. Dame. You're gonna make Jordan so jealous. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorites. Favorite. Dame's Dame's got the coolest moment on Top Shot, dude. He's got the moment where it's a throwback moment where he beat Houston with the game winner in uh-huh. game whatever game it was. Is that the one and where he, he just, stares into the camera? That one was over Paul George, I swear. Right. Yeah, that was Paul George. This this was his first one. It was in like I don't know what year it was, twenty fifteen or sixteen, where he just yeah, on the road in Houston closes them out wins the series with the deep three so i'm looking on the marketplace it says nba vip nft marketplace and it's got like phoenix suns nba all-star vip pass yeah, NFT, not for crazy. sale yeah but don't even those are crazy like high rich high ball high big baller yeah like the like golden that, state so. one I want is... the Sunyana Gaines moment over the oh. <laughs> Yeah! That's oh, the moment I, I want. I know. Hell yeah. I want the table. That, and I want it to be him taking the shot and then walking, and then I want it to continue to where he's like stands on the freaking... On uh, the side, the broadcaster the side. thing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I know. That's, that's the moment I want. That's like my uh, favorite shot okay. moment. My moment is Memo with the big balls. That would be oh, so Kobe. <laughs> the shot. Yeah, dude. Well, I was at that game. I was at that game. I want that too. Then Kobe did it back, but this Jazz still got the deal. Yeah, dude, Kobe was freaking. I want the moment where Rudy Gobert touched all of the microphones. (laughs) (laughs) The the lob from Donovan to Rudy that won game, whatever it was against Dallas last year. The last one. yeah, that's a moment, and it's so sick. Wow, this is really cool. Like two bucks. Or a moment with Joe Ingles staring at Paul George saying, who's your daddy? I know. <laughs> That'd be dope. I know. Yeah, Ingles is a popular one amongst everyone in the Discord. We're, we're all so sad about him being gone. Yeah. Well, I. what time so are you I guys doing Legends on Friday? Because I've got some other questions, and... Yeah, dude. Eight. I would love to meet everybody. At eight, so I'm going to be there at like 7.30. Um, Top Shot sent me a bunch of merch today. I got like 60 t-shirts. Um, can, you, then, can you send us a link of just where we can get started? And, I mean, even just buy the smaller cards to start collecting and all that jazz. Let me look here. Who's talking? I down, down. Down. I'll, I'll post okay. it all. Well, I... <laughs> I'll post it in the, yeah, the gonna, podcast link too. Well, and the other thing is, you guys can if you guys get into the uh, into the Discord. Um, there's a whole new like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like troll free group of people that that would be uh, so fun. Would would love to like Honest, engage like, that and who like, has the time to troll honestly that's what i don't get <laughs> yeah yeah Man, i will I make don't. time to troll you <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow night i'm going to be hosting a twitch stream where it's a 20 either 20 or 25 question trivia and during the season the trivia is just about like the last month's worth of games mm-hmm. so if you've been paying attention which you guys clearly have, you've got a leg up. The top 10 people in the trivia win prizes. Uh, oh, they're all moments. Yeah. But we dropped 500 bucks on the trivia prizes. 
So, um, well, send us your Twitch too, because I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, do it. We should right. go. Um, we should go Friday night. Which yeah. Is yeah, let's do it. I'm I'm all in. We we had a bunch of people in this Twitter spaces and once we started talking about that, they all bounced. I think they yeah. wanted to talk about the game, but I was yeah, like, okay. you know, crazy. whatever. Yeah, this this is like way it. more important. <laughs> well, I think Yeah, I was thinking we we probably should have done this as a separate pod. Yeah. Well, I was even thinking so you'll be at Legends at 7:30 on Friday. I will. Would you be cool to do a, a pod that's just dedicated to Utah Jazz NBA tops before? Yeah, I would love it, bro. I would love it. What if, what if we could? Can you get in earlier? Maybe like seven, just because I've got yeah. I've got four mics, but it just sometimes it takes Jordan, a little longer to set up. Jordan, an idea is bring your brother, and then you guys can kind of do his yes. YouTube as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay cool. Um, yeah, I can be there at seven. Okay, let's let's do that, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this podcast because no one's here, and my I don't even my mind's not on the game anymore. It's on collecting some moments. So uh, so get your get your account set up like with that link, which it sounds like you already did if you already saw your Olenic. Yeah, um, yeah. And then when, Colin, if you go ahead, I was sorry. I was gonna ask when is when is the app expected to come out because um, yeah, it was the, supposed to come out it was supposed to come out this month and it got delayed so knowing that i would assume you know quarter one of next year okay. just like every good app that we're waiting on oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and the app i think the app's gonna be sweet um there obviously it, it helps people feel more like comfortable with the product when there's an app but they're taking their time with it making sure it's done right it'd be cool if they did something like pokemon go where if you went to certain spots in the city or like in the arena you could you could and they and they are gonna do that and they yeah and they're good and that's dude there's gonna do so many cool things for all-star so right now they're doing this thing called the tour where they're doing events in portland and toronto and Paris, and if you show up to these events, you get a ticket that allows you to buy a like a pack that only people at this event get. That's so cool. So like these these Portland people just got access to this rare Terry Porter moment. So sick. That'd be awesome for someone who works for an airline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be making a lot of money. My well, wife Jeff almost got to get an upper leg on the all three. Totally, totally. My I'm wife had a job at JetBlue. I needed, and she she didn't take it because she had to get vaccinated. And so maybe uh, maybe I need to tell her to go get that job again so I can fly around <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> collect these. I, 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 I think wish they, I knew someone who worked for an airline. Serious? T- yeah, I know, right? But they have been talking about like the location stuff and like in arena type experiences. Um, yeah, I mean they're still in such er- the early phase. But I mean, you already you see people spending fifty grand on moments like it's uh, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, it, it's exciting to me too because like we're getting in, like you said, it kind of bottomed out. I would imagine it's kind of like stock and goes along with the the market. Totally. And so it's it's an it can be an investment, and um, I like I'm instantly hooked, and this is the first night I've heard about it, I, and I. I didn't want you to try and explain over text, so I was like, just hop right. on, explain yeah, it's it. Too much. Yeah, and and usually we have hundreds of listeners, so if they're listening, yeah. uh, I think that's really. I mean, I come from like a marketing background, so like, what what is it from your perspective that is holding back? top shots just like blowing up because it's been a thing for four people, years people are afraid of nfts people hear nft and they're like they think like somebody even said in the twitter chat earlier is that an mlm uh, <laughs> yeah p- people just they hear nft and they just shut down weird you know like they're freaked out i don't understand it I don't know. I got I got in early on Doge and I loved it. So I mean, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> me too. So, but that's but that was the thing is there was back when.
when NFT and Doge and all of them were going at each other, there was a lot of mudslinging between all of them, and they all spent a lot of time putting bad press out about each other, and they didn't do themselves any justice. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of that negativity still flowing around on the interweb. Right. Totally. And, and uh, I mean, buying Doge now, like, I don't know, I'm not... I bought, I had some Doge and I was stoked, but like, it's not like a product you look at and show your friends and, and it doesn't get you into NBA games. And so that's the key difference is when people start to see the utility, they're going to, you know, it's yeah. like, okay, like, well, and I follow Gary V too. And he's just been on it for so long that I'm like, uh, man, I'm excited, but I, I don't understand fully, but this is something that I can comprehend just because I'm a jazz fan. I love basketball. I like, yeah, this, this is something I would buy that is an NFT easily. It's easy. And you don't have to have a crypto wallet. Like you can use your yes. debit card. Yeah. Like if you have Ethereum, you can link it. And that's how a lot of people got like going with top shot is because they hit with Ethereum mm-hmm. and transferred it over. But not me. <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> I work as a I work at a drug rehab in Ogden. I don't make good money, but I you know just slowly grind. You know, buy moments that I think are gonna go up. Like over the summer, I bought a bunch of Shea Gilgis Alexander because I knew he was gonna pop, and I've been you know sold a couple for profit, and so it's fun like forecasting. So eat up Kessler, eat up Lowry marketing. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a it's, trading card game to be honest. I mean, serious. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I wish I would have known about this before Christmas because then I would have asked everyone to buy me these instead. Uh, hey, uh, Jordan, it's my birthday. You can still send me something. It is your birthday shit. today. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. I, I completely forgot. I remembered that we were hoping for a trade to go through this no, morning and it, it, it didn't work it's well uh pack. yeah maybe i'll buy you a starter pack how about that there you go. yeah that sounds so it's awesome Alan's birthday is that no it's kevin's no okay. not, not for another month sorry okay i'm next month too well february oh really nice well, you guys all missed mine. I was in November, so you all owe me a starter pack. Oh, so we all owe you <laughs> I wished you a happy birthday on your birthday. I know. You did. You're the man. I, uh, I'm i not as good at that unless I'm looking at Facebook or something that reminds me. It's fine. I, I still love you, Jordan. I still love you. <laughs> all right. Well, cool. I, I appreciate you uh, hopping on. What was your, your actual name? Because yeah, I'm just my, calling you the Jazz Lounge. Name. Yeah, it's Colton, and my Twitter handle was just at Colton. Okay. C O U L T I N. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I DM look forward. Me. Yeah, um, send me if you could just DM me all it. the links on like I, I can link everything in the podcast. Uh, so if someone's interested, they can just click on it, and then yeah, um, yeah I'll keep in touch with you. I I should be able to bring all my microphones and stuff for Friday, and and we'll have a party, man. Yeah, that would be rad. And and the more jazz people that get in on it, like, you know, we're still early. Let's, you know, it it, it only benefits each other. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll uh, tweet it out, and I've got quite a few jazz friends. I know another kid that um, is down in Lehigh area that would probably come. So, yeah, yeah, we'll make it happen. Awesome. Cool. Well, good chatting with you guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. And uh, unfortunately, the Jazz lost tonight, but we will be back at it again for the next game. We are live on Twitter Spaces for now, every single game, uh, live on YouTube streaming as well. So uh, anytime you want to hop in and and join in on on, uh, the Jazz games or yeah, yeah, even just event session, if you're completely frustrated, it's good to let that out and then go hang out with your family yeah, and, <laughs> and this and and all my followers see that i'm in here so it helps you know boost your guys's thing so cool man well i appreciate, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. it uh hopefully the jazz do a little better and i really hope that uh will hardy gets a play for larry market to get a bucket when we really need one desperately in a drought yeah like how like, is that so hard uh, we need it bad but um 
yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Go like, comment, follow, do all the, the good deeds, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Thanks, see ya. Peace.